Okay, so here we go. Uh, today may be the last uh, lecture in which we talk about diffusions and we will next time start with thermal oxidation. Uh, let me quickly revisit something which we did earlier, but little more carefully we look into some more problems in actual diffusion profile. So we looked for theory again. What we see now that uh, the flux density was given as d minus d dn by dx from the fixed first law, but one can see from here at a given temperature of uh, diffusion which may be around 900 degree plus, the intrinsic carrier concentration of silicon itself will be large enough, large hole electron pairs are anyway available. So Ni is higher, however at diffusion temperature if the ionized impurities are created larger than this Ni, they create a gradient actually and that is essentially leads to space charge and because of that we say there is a electric field. Now this additional electric field actually provides mobility to ions, okay. So the diffusing species which are ionic actually find that there is not only a force due to the diffusion gradient, but also there is a field, uh, field added flux available which is mu times n into eta E which is the electric field. I hope you have done some devices somewhere. This has Einstein relation plus uh, dkt by q plus we can always find built in electric field essentially is minus kt by q1 upon n dn by dx. Look for theory of devices or any other book. This is a standard expression. In our case n of course is the carriers available which you can say dn capital dn by uh, n is the number of impurities and n are electrons. Please remember n are electrons. So in real life if you have noted down the flux has now two terms, one due to uh, gradient, the other due to electric field and uh, one can see from there if the electric field is in the direction, more diffusion will actually occur. So impurities can go deeper during this higher gradients and because of that higher electric fields. These relations are standard, if you wish I can even derive them. This is very simple derivations, but uh, those who uh, uh, want to see some other book and devices do see, see that, okay. So why are we doing this is some one example at least or maybe two examples. I will give you why are we so keen about doing this because we figured out in some species at some temperature did go more than what we thought by normal diffusion equations. So why did they go? So we came back and say oh there must be some additional force on that which carried them ahead okay or in some cases the profile suddenly drops down. So why, why what has happened suddenly? So some reasons which we saw in real profiles we wanted to explain and based for them we created some more physics and uh, this is what it is. Have you noted down now? Uh, major interest to us is you these two equations which I wrote. J is flux density d dn by dx minus of course even now I am assuming d is constant in fact d is also a function of n itself. So there is additional term may appear but that we will see little later. So if I expand this in real term it comes as 1 minus d1 plus dn by dn into dn by dx uh, and this term in the bracket 1 plus dn by dn, n is the electron concentration, n is the capital N is impurity concentration. Then it, it that factor 1 plus dn by dx is given a name H which is enhancement factor, which is enhancement factor. So d into H is essentially now effective d, d into H is now effective d and therefore we can even find what is H which I did. I hope that you know these two equations again as I said if you do not know these equations read again. The charge neutrality means P plus ND is equal to Na plus N, Na minus. So charge neutrality holds. So this is the first equation we use and law of mass action is what? Pn is equal to Ni square. So using these two equations you can write this expression n by ni is equal to capital n by 2 ni plus bracketed n by 2 ni square plus 1 to the power half 
in this case either ND or NH will be used because you will have only one kind of species, N will be either ND or NH because you are only diffusing a species. So, if I solve this and use binomial expansion assuming that N is larger than NI that is the condition I set, then this can be expanded and roughly this can be written as 1 plus n upon n square plus 4 n i square. This is roughly good enough. This may be around, if you calculate this value, this may be around 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 okay, or sometimes even 0 0.8. In, if n is much, uh, n i is comparable to n, it can be as high as 0 0.8. Okay. So, depending on the value of n and n i at that temperature, one gets the coefficient h which can be as I said can go up to maximum up to 2, but minimum at least is not 2 means 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, but typically around 1.2 to 1.4 is the value which you get total h is the factor which is 1.4. So, what does this mean? That the diffusivity will increase in the presence of large dopants at if the temperature is high, Ni is higher, but dopants are even higher. So, for higher doping cases additional diffusion appears simply because this field enhancement factor H. There is another effect people see which is very important and uh, we will see that this, but if you have noted down as I said this is my expansion I solve it. So, you do not have to solve every step you just this is the expression and you may write this expression. I write it everything because I do not copy, so I had to solve myself. So, when I solve steps have to be written, but you do not have to, okay. I already solved it. Okay. I just want to tell that how it is done because most people believe that books a final answer they give, no, it is derivable from basics. That is why I wrote two equations and everything is solvable. Okay, so J is minus H dn by dx or D effect to dn by dx. If you have noted down, here is an effect what it can give. Uh, let us say initial profile was this one and there are impurities here and electrons here which are higher mobilities. Remember electrons have higher mobility than ions. Since electrons have higher mobility than ions, electrons move faster and that is why the electric field is there is a depletion layer created which increases the electric fields. If there is a enhanced electric field impurities try to follow the electric field and since they follow the new profile is something which is different this was the initial profile and now this is additional uh, diffusivity has been seen. So, it actually goes in okay, but net concentration remaining same surface concentration slightly reduces to adjust the number of impurities which you are pushing. There is another effect which uh, is not so really obvious from here. This is called isotropic diffusion which is also a worrying part to many uh, solid state diffusion people. If I am actually introducing impurities inside of a silicon substrate, this is one effect, this is another effect. So, the impurities do not travel essentially the electric field to great extent pushes them down, but there is a diffusion also sideways okay. this is called lateral diffusions. This is because the impurities are isotropic in their getting inside material there is except little directivity I get it because electric field is with me, but even then there is a side diffusion goes on. So, the actual source or drain if I create and I am allowing some window and through which I am putting impurities, the source drain will not be of the same size up through which the window I pushed in, but they will be also lateral on the side okay. and that is sometimes worrying because essentially it, it helps in some cases because channel length may reduce in fact good, but in some cases it will actually improve it will allow more depletions there and more bulk charge will appear. So, there are issues Vt will increase. So, there are issues in which one has to worry how much lateral diffusion is. So, if your electric field is stronger, this lateral diffusions are smaller. So, larger the doping you are doing this is possible for a normal mode of diffusion this is not possible. Okay. 
because if n i is equal or less than larger than this at that temperature then it will not have enhanced effect it will only go through laterally as well anywhere okay. This is not just 3 dimension it will go all directions isotropic is the word if anything goes in one direction what is the word used anisotropic. So we are actually looking for anisotropic situation but we never get it in normal diffusivities is that no 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 there is in a way in, inside furnace there is no voltage this is called built in fields okay. these are called because of the as I say electrons are higher and they move faster in compared to because of their mobility are higher. So as they move out the depletion layer is created and that depletion layer essentially creates electric field okay space charge Poisson's law okay. So more impurities are then sucked in because the electron the electric field electrons going in means field is higher on the other side. Yeah, yeah that is what I, only at higher doping this is seen at lower doping this is not so strong an effect that is why I say H is close to 1.1 to 2 depending on the dopings actually you are going to do. Okay, this is uh, two effects which I seen the third also is uh, there is another problem which we see in many cases. We also know that D is also a function of impurity concentration that is what I said and it can be shown that the vacancies in presence of electrons and holes can be charged species. The figure maybe I can draw for you. This is your lattice. Let us say this is your vacancy. And this is your impurity. So this impurity finds a vacancy here, but it does not really immediately go then because it will create a vacancy here. But normally what happens, it exchanges something like this is called a vacancy ion pair is called vacancy ion pair okay and actually this whole vacancy ion pair actually jumps okay so when this goes ahead or this goes ahead it will create another vacancy and ion will move ahead of it okay so essentially what happens this wherever vacancy is larger in earlier and there is a gradient so more and more impurities in a pair start getting in. So this is a similar it can also occur, occur with interstitials but that diffusion is not very dominant for us why because they are not contributing electrically but there is in real life even that diffusion is interstitial vacancy pair is also formed okay. So we are not looking that so carefully because they do not contribute to elect resistivity or currents. However in real life many things happen in materials which we do not look into it because they are not electrically active situations whereas in our case if the electron holes are available this normal vacancy is called neutral it is only there is no charge with it but if it forms a pair it picks up a hole okay then it is called V plus and if it can pick up more than one electron that is two vacancies or two ions close to one vacancy di vacancy as it is called then or maybe rth vacancy as it is called. So the neutral vacancy plus R number of electrons R can be 1, 2, 3 but not more than 3 in different materials Re minus is we are this is the definition I give when it picks up a hole then it becomes positively charged vacancy if it picks up an electron it becomes negatively charged and it can pick up 2 electrons, 1 electron, 2 electrons and even 3 electrons. So that is called charged vacancies. Now if there is a charge vacancy in a band of silicon what does that mean and if these vacancies have their energy state in the band gap then we have worries if they are outside we may not be worried with the conduction band above we, who cares. However when we did lot of SKI other experiment Raman spectra and many others it has been found by many experiments that the, these energy particularly for impurities in silicon there are two my electron states uh, vacancy state minus 1 minus V minus and V minus 2 which is energy minus 1 energy minus minus the upper one is only 0 0.11 EV from conduction band the other is 0 0.44 electron volt in the ba conduction band whereas in the case of holes there is only one possible mechanism in silicon V plus so that is only 
and that also varies in different materials. For example, indium, if you have an indium species and with a vacancy, it may have around 0.16 electron volts as the uh, band gap uh, is, the, is the energy here. But in the case of boron or any other species, it can be as low as 0 0.08, 0 0.1, point of situ 0 0.01 or 0 0.1 in many cases. So, it depends on species and depends on material you are using. This V plus plus, uh, V plus, but please remember even V plus plus in some other material with some other impurities is possible. In silicon, only V plus is observed within the band gap. Whereas two electron states V minus and V minus minus or 2 minus as we call are also available. Now because of availability of this states, yeah this acts like a trap that is what the vacancies and in, therefore the impurities are actually trapped on the, these vacancy charge vacancy sites. Okay. So they may form now pairs like for boron it may form an IV plus or IV0. In case of phosphorus it may form IV0, I is impurity, IV minus and IV minus minus. These are pairs. In arsenic same is for phosphorus, IV0, IV minus, IV minus minus. So what is the implication? There are otherwise impurities are going and picking up vacancy site, but there is additional mechanism of pair diffusion which is adding to the movement of ions and that means there will be additional diffusivity in the presence of vacancy ion pairs. One of course is actual jumps which we have already done that is how we calculated D. There is a jump frequency one point to the other this is the energy barrier it crosses reaches the next side. But there is additional mechanisms we see at least for higher doping cases in most cases then they form a pairs and these pairs may contribute to additional diffusivity. If you are noted down, please remember this has been verified by number of experiments including infrared spectroscopy including many other analytical tools that there are charge vacancies. Is that okay everyone? Why I am doing all this? I am show you one example and why I thought of doing show you because uh, of course these days many very few people are working on phosphorus diffusion in CMOS but uh, mostly we are going for arsenic. Why we like to go arsenic? No, 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 it is not light, it is not mass part. Shallow junction. shallow junction. One is this, but this is the only reason. Arsenic can give me highest solid solubility. Its misfit factor is 0, same tetrahedral radius that of silicon, 1.18 Armstrong. So the largest number of impurities which I can push in for arsenic is only possible in silicon. So 4 into 10 to power 21 per cc I can get to you. No other species can go to this concentration. Is that clear? Phosphorus has a, uh, this is around 1.1 uh, 1 .1 or something, so it will give 0 0.25 or something as misfit factor, which means it cannot go to all the way, it may go to 21, but it will not go 4 into 21 or 5 into 21, which is possible in arsenic. So for larger surface concentrations, arsenic is ideal and the second of course is the diffusivity of arsenic as that figure other day showed has the least of diffusivity among all other species. What is the advantage? Shallow junctions. Okay. Very good. So, if you look at the, of course, you can solve this, but I just wrote the final answer to show you. The diffusivity then effectively is H time additional diffusivity because of pairs. Uh, this P is the whole concentration with reference to Ni, N is to the Ni. And remember these are two possible vacancy mechanisms, one with positive D, negative 2 Ds and uh, however this is general expression, both are P or N. So for if you look for N alone, this plus will be not there because there will not be any IV plus formation because say phosphorus is already having additional electron with us okay, or arsenic has additional electron with it. So they form only D minus and D minus minus pairs. 
So, d effective for n is d0 plus d minus n by ni plus this. Actually, n by ni is the ratio of vacancies to the intrinsic vacancy at a given time, some other day. That's only extrinsic case the number of vacancies available to the intrinsic case number of the ratio of that is essentially n by n i. You just listen, listen to me what I say this is good enough d effective for p dopant will be d0 plus d plus only because borons are minus b minus ions okay. So, this will only give one term. So, now we see that for a given doping situations with that temperature we find d I know p and n. So, I in n i and then I, I know how much is d effective for that species. Now, all that we did for two reasons, here is something an example you note down and then I will show you where these examples were used. There are two popular effects in a, particularly in the bipolar processes, uh, one of them is very important. Uh, please remember I keep saying mass circuits are taken, o taken over bipolars by uh, huge numbers, but there is still 8 to 10 percent bipolar market. So, do not think that bipolars are 0. Okay. So, never and firstly I like bipolars because it gives lot of physics of semiconductors junctions. You use anything in mass ladder, but basic thinking is far better in bipolars, then only you can think why mass did not do or as bad as bipolars or why did it better than bipolars. So, in some sense do not think that bipolar are out, the only thing silicon bipolar are out okay. that much I can say. All high frequency HEMTs or whatever devices now are gallium arsenide or 3,5 material based material, uh, bipolars, but they are very much there, they are in optical devices everywhere and therefore do not think that BJTs are over okay. Their application area has certainly changed. Okay, so, I want to show you two cases quickly. If I see this is my let us say I am making an NPN transistor vertical, this is my base diffusion, this is in substrate N and I make N plus diffusion for making emitter. Actually, it is also here collector this is a BJT. Now, what I thought that if I diffuse emitter here, the base width actually is this much. Okay. So, it is good if I diffuse emitter little this, then I will get smaller base width so better gains. Of course, it is not very true because it will also go in all directions, but the minimum base width is available to you, but it does not occur like this. In fact, in real life exactly below emitter there is a dip in the base region, it is called emitter dip effect. So, what happens the base width did not change, okay. it remains same and therefore your gain did not get improved uh, did not get improved as what we all thought that it should but it did not okay so this was an anomalous situation we thought it should do something but it did not so we thought why why this is only a wherever n plus was coming why there was a additional diffusivity of boron down okay please remember boron is going down okay so we figure out that emitter is a heavily doped material N plus maybe phosphorus or something. What kind of vacancies uh, pair it can form phosphorus or uh, even if arsenic, it can form minus V minus and V minus minus. So, there is a diffusivity which is essentially available with this, but as soon as it tries to go below the concentration itself reduces. Surface is highest, but as emitter diffusion happens, the concentration at this junction point is smaller, it comes smaller and smaller. So, now what time this pair formation was declared by us when n i is n is larger than n i, but as n decreases, these pairs do not remain paired and vacancies are released. Okay. They break p plus let us say uh, sorry i v 0 i v minus let us say 
becomes I plus V minus. So, vacancies are released. As the vacancies are released, vacancy does not mind it is and they are mostly initially minus, but it may also happen that it may become I minus plus V0. If there are neutral vacancies created there, the boron now finds there is an additional place where they can go, okay. And therefore, wherever this vacancy drift down, which was the H factor going down, so it finds that more and more vacancies are available just below that. So more and more boron goes down, goes down through this. So first thing it happens that at high uh, concentration the pairs occur, but at lower it did not. Okay. So, this was one reason we said that look this is one possibility that pair might have broken down. In the case of phosphorus there are many effect but a major effect I can show you. Let us say this is ideal profile I want for phosphorus N0 Xj I want to create somewhere here in B. But what I figure out in real life this is the profile whether Gaussian or something like this, but in real life the profile is not like this actually. There is a kink at some point and suddenly more impurities get out. The same reason one can ascribe that as the concentration of this impurities goes down below NIE, the vacancy pair both V minus minus as well as V minus actually are broken down they come out and as more and more vacancies are available for you, phosphorus starts following these vacancies and start getting more and more inside. So now the junction depth many times is orders of higher than what you thought in your process. You thought it is a 0.1 micron junction, it may become a micron junction, okay. Now this effect has to be known a priori because otherwise the junction depth which you decide in the base width or any other parameter may actually go so early that your performance of the circuit will never be as what you wanted. Therefore, this anomalous effect when first time was observed many years ago, people realized that there must be something more to it and therefore they look, looked into physics once again and they say okay there is an additional diffusivity and breaking down of pairs which causes vacancy creations which allows excess diffusivity. Okay. This issues which I am talking about are real life issues. Uh, of course, some books might be, uh, I do not think Plummer, Plummer has given this diffusivity term, but I think he did not explain much about the actual profiles which people observe. Okay. Maybe dip effect everyone talks. Okay. This was first worry because they were, they were only making in 70s BJTs and every time we used to figure it out that the gain has not improved. Okay, which we thought by so much diffusion will happen. So we have to replan ourselves how much we should do, how much. I mean, so all these issues came when BJT gains were not attainable and then we started looking for physics. Okay. Is it okay? So these issues are essentially what I must say are physics based and one can explain there are many anomalous effects. There are 12 or so. I am not going to each of them. I am just trying to say this is the physics one can think of and can explain the real results. Why I am interested in these models? Because if I am doing this whole processing of the chip on computer, then it computer cannot think hopefully so good. Of course, there is an artificial intelligence word is used, but this AI is how much you teach. So that is not a real artificial. Okay. That is AI is only as much as you teach, it is a neuron, you teach neuron that, that much it remembers, it is like putting in memory there. Okay. However, in real life uh, that cannot do the job of humans. So what we figured out that some results which we are getting are not so ready, but the actual process has shown something else. So the computer should also know what could have gone through. Okay. So the models had to be substituted there. Okay. That is why these models were created because the CAD tool we one needs to have exact models not exactly. Of course, how, what do we do in spite of all this let us say I am not able to get the profile then I will add some 1 plus k times some factor okay, and try to fit there first and then I start explaining k afterwards after I find it is fitting. Okay. Most due regards to all modeling people but that is what they will do they will add 1 plus k and 
as fit to it that if k does not fit linearly k e to the power b, they will put some some number and then also get a physics. Okay. Oh, this must be thermodynamic issue, come back. Okay. That is the, but anyway, at the end of the day computer has to give the values which we observe closest to what it should be. Having done modeling, having done the physics, having done the possible profiles you can get, okay. How do I calculate time temperatures for given uh, depths and uh, surface concentration? Now we actually want to see how it is done in a lab, okay, because unless we do in a lab, there is no issue. So essentially, if you are looking for diffusion processes in a lab, uh, first start looking into what are the requirements. What are the requirement for a good diffusion system? These are some of my thoughts over the years. If you have seen it, the diffusing impurity should be always brought in contact with the pre-cleaned silicon surface, only then impurities can go. So they must touch somewhere, but gaseous form, solid form, whatever form, they must touch the surface of silicon. So first system which you are, you are going to create must have possibility of see that the source is touching silicon, okay. so that kind of system, you must build something. Okay. It should also remain in contact as long as your diffusion process is going to be done. For given temperature time cycle, the impurities must keep touching this silicon surface. If you are depositing something, you must remain uniform there. So there must be constancy available. It should not vary then, you know, suddenly some impurity is gone away, suddenly they come, it is not uniform that should remain there. So that is another issue. The third requirement from a diffusing system should be such that uh, it should be possible to vary surface concentrations NS up to its solid solubility limits. It should allow me to reach the solid solubility limits at the highest of temperatures, 410 to power 21 or kind of that value, if I cannot reach that, that means I am limited by the diffusing system which I do not want. Okay. Of course, these are all obvious, but whatever is obvious is stated. Okay. The diffusion process be such that it does not damage the surface of the wafer, because if surface damage occurs, then there are more issues of what we call traps created and random diffusivity will start. So it should not actually damage the surface of silicon. Okay. This is very important. The reason why I said that many gases or many materials we did not use because it started surface damages. We please remember the wafer which we created first time was polished surface and polish is of the order of 0 0.01 micron. That is the level this at which our polish was and that is what I said it is better than normal mirror finish. It is such a flat surface. So anything pits goes on it which you do not see by eye but maybe nanos, hundreds of nanometer pits, it will create different divisivities. Okay. And therefore we do not want anything which goes there. Of course you can say I will remove that, yeah there that exists, that possibility that okay I will do some way that I will further polish it out after my process. That is done. This process is called CMP. Okay mechanical polish, chemical mechanical polishing which is allowed now, earlier it was not, now it is allowed. So it is not that this criteria is not so valid now we can say okay I have a CMP, I will do that. Okay. okay, so these are four, there are few more which uh, we will look into, is that okay? First is contact, second is till diffusion it should remain, all impurities should remain in contact, it should be given it should be allowed to get me the best of surface concentration I need and the process should be such that it does not damage the wafer. These are four uh, requirements. After the diffusion process, the impurities and other materials on the wafer surface should be easily removable. That is most important. For example, other day I said the silicate glasses, borosilicate or phosphosilicate glass, I should be able to remove that and not by great polish, I should just dip something and it should again get a mirror polish again. So this is an essential part of a system, whichever gases, sources you are using, 
you must see that they finally give me hability of the any surface which I want. Uh, one of the major interest in companies are the last two. Uh, the diffusion system should be able to give reproducible results. If I do today, maybe another half an hour later, some other diffusion, it should be reproducible. If the one result is not matching the other, then I have a problem of reliability. Not only uh, the problem is not only uh, these are two slightly same but different. Reproducible essentially means for a given process, the whole number of wafers in a run should have same result. And if I do number of such runs, they also should produce same results. Okay. If there is a huge variation, then my process is not standard, my system is not standard because the yield is money. So I want almost 100 percent yield. So, if, so as close I reach, that much money I earn. Okay. So these are manufacturing requirements that the process has to be 100 percent uniform throughout that any number of times I do and that is very important. Okay. There are two kinds of systems for diffusion we use, one is called open tube systems, the other is sealed tube which is rarely used but uh, possibly okay. we will see at least this one. Maybe I have a photograph of a furnace which will probably give some idea, I do not know whether, yeah I have. Okay, first let me have you written down? Quiz may ye chija puchi ja sakti hai. Okay, typical furnace is shown here. Another photograph is better, but this is just to show you. This is typically what a furnace looks like. Okay, it depends on how many tubes you want. This is a four stack furnace one tube, two tube, three tube, four tube, four stack furnace. This part of the back side of the, this essentially has all gas uh, entry systems. Different kinds of gases are required at different flow rates and they are to be given to different tubes. So this is a gas flow system which is just rear side of the entrance of the way every tube for that. So this is a very huge system. Typically a furnace may be height around 9 feet to 12 feet depends on how many tubes you have and what size of tubes you are actually going to use. The better figure is somewhere here. This is a typical uh, four stack furnace shown here okay. and uh, one can see these are the this exits. You can see here a small table is I mean this rider is kept so that you can go and put something above. So you hide you can guess what it is. Okay. The kind of clean room requirement dresses is shown here, bungee jump, bungee suits, absolutely not known who is inside. Okay. That is the catch in that. It should be so much covered that except for your eyes, nothing should be visible and you have two specs on that, one internal specs, one upper specs. So you will not be able to see who is in. Okay. This is how wafers are loaded. I will show this is not very good. Wafers are put in a rack and loaded. Okay. This is a quartz tube which is used in all diffusion furnace. Quartz is the highest purity glass and is crystalline. Its melting temperature is as high as 1812 degree centigrade. So it is all used up to 1400 degree centigrade quartz tubes can be used. Okay. Now this is the cap which sits on this. Okay, which sits on that. Okay. This hole is inside. So the way it is done is this furnace is in a semi clean area which may be class 1000 or class 100 area. But it is project this tube outlet is projected in clean area. So wafers are introduced from clean area, clean benches and a clean environment. So no dust sits on wafers. So that is the kind of furnaces we used and as I say each furnace per stack as they say per uh, tube we, these days. Please remember this size is roughly 3 inch wafer size, this is a 4 inch tube can have handle 3 inch wafers or preferably 2 inch wafers. If you have a 12 inch wafers you need to have 16 inch tube. Okay. So what is the importance in that? Larger the tube means larger heating element has to be provided so much this, larger amount of gases has to be flown. Volume is so high, okay. 
However, larger the size of the wafer, more chips will come out of a single wafer in one run. So, that is why we still want to go higher and higher for the sake of profitability. Uh, I have started work in 60s with 1 inch wafer, 2 inch wafer, I went 3 inch wafers and then of course then I came here and everyone said why not make a 6 inch wafer furnace. I say the cost of 6 inch wafer furnace is 12 times that of 3 inch wafer furnace. So I, I just wanted to show you that the furnaces as such you see are very, very crucial and uh, uh, the kind of furnace system at the end we may we'll talk more about it. Uh, types of sources which we use in diffusion are three kinds solid source, liquid source and gaseous source. Uh, the solid sources which sits actually on the wafer is called primary source. The impurity source which actually gets impurities into silicon is called its primary source. You may have any other source but must convert it into primary source okay, so that diffusion will only occur through primary source. Okay. There is also fourth possibility which is called spin on sources, good for solar cells, cheaper. Okay. Typical impurities used, used in silicon processing are N type as arsenic, phosphorus, antimony, P type, boron, indium and and I in, intentionally put here because aluminum, gallium are rarely used but they are available, they can be Im implemented. Everyone thought indium has a very large uh, energy gap, uh, energy from the valence band 0.16, so it will never be used because how many hole, holes it will create since the energy is higher e to the power minus E s by k t, so larger the energy smaller number of holes it will create, boron has 0.0 8 or 0 0.06 EVs. So, it will create almost at room temperature all can be ionized, so all holes can be achieved whereas in indium unlikely to get larger concentrations. So, indium is not used, aluminum has a one another problem, what aluminum is also has a diffusivity in silicon but also is a alloy with silicon. Now, if it does both then one does not know how much whether aluminum is going or not going and how much it is going. It also gets too fast oxidized, what is it aluminum oxide is called? Nee, nee, what is the commercial anodized, okay. whatever uh, aluminum frames you see they are all oxidized and polished and called anodized, so they are alumina only. Okay. So, aluminum is not a very good uh, uh, impurity to diffuse because it may form an alloy quicker than it diffuses down, but it does, it is not that it cannot be, it is a type 3 impurity, it will create holes, okay. but it has a slightly higher energy of uh, this. So, one does not use aluminum as any time uh, an impurity source. The aluminum has a strong advantage in source drain contacts because let us say I have a P type source and P type drain and I put aluminum contact. So, even if P is not heavily doped, this aluminum top doping during the higher temperature processing will make a good alloy and good ohmicity. So, it is good for P channel devices particularly putting aluminum contact, but aluminum is now almost out of uh, all IC processes barring exceptions. Uh, we are looking for higher conductivity materials, aluminum is very good conductor everyone thought, but copper is even better. So, why we did not use copper? Copper is very strong oxidizing itself, it forms copper oxide which is insulating. So, we want now we protect oxidation, but we run copper line. Okay. Earlier when we made first lab in 80s, there was not a single copper tubing or copper material in whole lab because copper is a poison, it gives almost an, a level in the silicon which is near mid gap. So, we wanted to avoid copper everywhere. Nowadays, the copper is the major interconnects. 20 years earlier, they started in 98 from IBM, Damson process, they actually first time introduced copper interconnects. What is the advantage? The resistivity ratio of aluminum to copper is 3 times. So, obviously for the resistance of a line will be 3 times smaller compared to aluminum for same size, which means the RC time constant will go down, which means speeds can be improved. The issue came, circuit devices could give faster outputs, but running from one point to other is slowing down. 
So, he says interconnect related problems. So, first attempt was made to improve interconnect itself. Okay. So, that is why aluminum. So, this is additional features you should know. Gallium has even deeper impurity, so it hardly used. Okay. There are some sensors now being used with gallium, okay. but you read some, maybe ask Professor Ram Gopal. Antimony is anti-dopant, can be used, but again it has a larger energy gap, therefore rarely used. And it is a much bigger, it has a, of course its misfit factor is small, so do not think it, it has a better compared to both phosphorus and that. Arsene of course is the best, but uh, as I said size is bigger and its energy is too high to create large number of electrons. Okay. There are also other impurities we introduce is gold, very important for us because faster devices, particularly the uh, bipolar devices, speed can be improved by gold dopings. Okay. These are called recombination centers. Okay, I will leave a word for you. Gold is amphoteric. What does it mean? Yeah, so it is an amphoteric impurity, it gives both levels, acceptor level is higher than the donor level. If you look at phosphorus, the impurity sources are solid sources. The phosphorus available in the market, even if it is purified, is called red phosphorus. It is a powder form and uh, it is available as red phosphorus. The red essentially what came because it gets little bit oxidized and it gives reddish color. So, people used to call that phosphorus as a red phosphorus, but it is essentially only a phosphorus with little oxidation on that. So, you will have to re re reduce it to make full phosphorus. The other source is what is called dibasic or even di mono ammonia or tri chloro or di tri also is possible, tri basic ammonium phosphate, mono basic ammonium phosphate, but mostly use this di basic NH42 HPO4. What will be mono? 1 here, 3 here. Okay. So, if you keep changing the phosphate with reference to NH4, it can be all 3 possibilities. But most used source is di basic ammonium phosphate. 4 phosphorus plus 5O2 forms P2O5. Please remember P2O5 is the basic source for phosphorus, is the primary source for phosphorus. P2O5 is the primary source for phosphorus diffusion. So, if I oxidize it, I shall create P2O5. The reaction further when during diffusion will be, once I have P2O5 on the surface of silicon, P2O5 will react with silicon and will form phosphorus and SiO2. Okay. So, phosphorus will get in and oxide will be on the top. Okay. This is process of diffusion, phosphorus in, oxide top. Okay. It does, it does, but it uh, is still thin enough and since you have a gas flow down, uh, it has a more concentration on the outside. So, the diffusivity is much stronger in than what is coming out. Internally, there is no gradient, it is opposing the gradient. So, fewer impurities will come out, but larger will go in. There is a flux both sides. In any thermodynamic system, x is going to y, y will come to x. Okay. It depends on the given temperature, forward reaction is favored or the reverse reaction is favored. Actually, I, you must have seen I have not put equal anywhere. The arrow essentially says that at different temperatures, reaction can be either way. Okay. It can be from right to left or left to right. This mixture which is mixture of SiO2 and P2O5 is called phosphosilicate glass. Okay. What is it called? Phosphosilicate glass and actually that is the source of impurities in fact. Okay. The liquid source which I may use uh, is very only known source of phosphorus is phosphorus oxychloride which is POCl3. And, uh, it is a liquid at room temperature and uh, the reaction is 4 POCl3 plus 3O2 is 2 P2O5 plus 6 Cl2. Now, we will see that this is not very favored because chlorine is a halogen which pits silicon. Okay. Silicon has a reaction with chlorine, silicon plus chlorine is silicon, di I mean silicon chloride. 
three forms, four forms. So any of that may actually remove some part of silicon. Then there is a source which is gaseous which is called phosphine. Okay. There was a gas called phosgene. What is that gas? Oh, so I, I, you were all born after that, so I thought you may not be knowing. Bhopal tragedy is very bad because of the phosgene gas, which is methyl isocyanide. Now, MIC. So, this, uh, the problem with all these gaseous sources which I am using in specific are extremely toxicity. For example, let us say if it is one, one part per million in 10 to the power 6, one atom, uh, one molecule is the level at which phosgene was toxic to human body. Of course, it was much higher than that in phosphine because it is actually released, so there was nothing stopping it. But pH 3 is 10 ppb, okay. So if you can see even 10 ppb can be released and you have a problem. The only advantage of pH 3 which uh, I may say you since I have used it and maybe I have, I do not know whether I have inhaled but I ran for my life was uh, it's, it has a fishy smell. So when it leaks you can run, you have all oxygen this inside, just run outside as fast as you can, okay. break every door if possible. Okay. <laughs> so it's very toxic but do not think it, all, there were hardly any accidents in the labs, many years ago there were few but now we take so much precautions that it is unlikely things will fail. Okay. So it is called fail safe operations, okay. if things happen some walls will be closed immediately, automatically, we do not do it. Such much volume increases, it will switch off everything. Okay. Uh, the phosphine gas at 440 degrees centigrade breaks into 3 hydrogen plus 4 2 p. Okay. Uh, of course, these equations are not every time balanced. In case they are not balanced, you balance. That arrow is only showing left to right, that is it. But I tried to balance, but I am still telling you if they are not balanced, just have balanced them out. So this 2P uh, that is phosphorus which is coming out of phosphine at 440 degree. So this reacts with oxygen and form P2O5. So your basic source you wanted it. So this phosphorus then will react with oxygen and form phosphorus uh, this. And if you have silicon around it will also form silicon dioxide. So phosphosilic glass which is the source of impurities. 5SiO2 plus phosphorus. Example shown here, this is your P2O5 silic sitting on silicon. When I drive in or when I push or continue this, these impurities get inside and SiO2 is created. Okay. This may also contain phosphorus, but that I will etch. So I will have fresh surface of N type in P. Okay. As I said, uh, I have already written there, PS3 is highly toxic gas. Uh, so what we use for safety is we dilute it with nitrogen. Typical dilution ratio is 99.9 .9 nitrogen to 0 0.1 phosphine. So if I have 10, 100 liters of nitrogen, I will add 1 cc of phosphine to that. Whenever I work in a lab, I take lot of precautions that it does not leak through anywhere. But luck is bad, if your luck is bad. We had a student who was working earlier, I am talking of 80s. Uh, everyone probably are, I do not know how much, hydrogen is extremely flammable gas, but we actually burn hydrogen. That is the way the hydrogen is removed in fact. But it should come out of a capillary and you should actually fire it, okay. This is a typical uh, diffusion system shown here. The furnace internal part is shown here. Uh, this is my quartz tube, this is the cap which I showed you earlier, just a minute. This is the tube and this is the cap with exit tube, okay. There is a, there is a heater here all around, this is only shown cross section. Uh, this heating element is resistive heaters. Actually, the tube is surrounded by some kind of a former which is called is made out of a material called mulite. What is it? 
Okay, mulite is a uh, plastic re, uh, plastic created resin, which is like a bricks of white. You know, you may ceramics. You must have seen white bricks. So they are mostly mulites. So actually, there is a mulite uh, rods are made, hollow rods, and tube gets inside, and there is a slots in the mulite when making, like a brick making. And this then there is a heating wire which is round bound around this mulite which covers this tube and you give a normal enough current 200 amps currents to heat this filament. Now the important is what material I should use for a good resistive heat this it should be very highly resistive and stand to higher temperatures. So what could be? No, no, no the wire should be what heating wires I want a tungsten is a good material firstly tungsten has a it's little fragile so when you form it it breaks many times. So one does not use tungsten, nickel chrome, nichrome as the word. So nichrome wires are um, they are more malleable and therefore they are wound around this. Now there are three coils one in the center area one in this two ends of the furnace. There are also thermal sensors two here, three here and two here. Now what is the purpose of these sensors because the problem is uh, depending on the your run number of wafers, the wafers I of course it is not shown here there is a quartz rack okay, and there are slots inside and wafers are sitting inside like this same height of course. Now since each wafer should see same temperature and same flows this is called center zone. So the center zone temperature should remain unaffected by the flow as well as by the change in your currents. Okay. So what they do is you have a end, end temperature monitoring, early temperature monitoring as well as center zone 3 monitors. Okay. These are fed to a PID controller and we keep on monitoring when to switch on or when to switch off the power to the coils, individual coils and therefore since PID controls are very fast, we are able to control the temperature in the central zone 0.25 plus minus degree centigrade plus minus 0.25 degree centigrade. So if you have a furnace, I may have 1100 plus minus quarter degree centigrade accuracy which is very good in any sense. Okay. So these are called resistive heaters, there are other heaters which are not resistive, what are those called? inductive heaters. So we will see in other processes we may use that is called cold furnaces. Okay. Inductive heaters are normally called cold furnaces. These are actually hot furnaces, huge, huge heat. Now to monitor this there are variety of thermal sensor, RTD is one, the thermistors are others, but thermistor at that temperature you cannot this. So we normally use thermocouples which is typically of the constant and copper. If it is outside, if it is inside it should be rhodium platinum inside a quartz tube. Uh, there are new sensors are also appearing using MAMS, okay. they are also very accurate. So we can monitor better temperature sensitivities and uh, uh, these are all newer techniques with new things but PID control is still as it was. Okay. It has a microprocessor which is sitting with, along with PID and you set the temperature beforehand pass gas flows till you do not load the wafers. And when the temperature settles down, then only you push it. There are all digital displays to know where is what temperatures. Okay. The gas flow controls is something like this. For example, I want a O2 gas, so there is a flow meter here with a wall. I can pass oxygen, I can pass nitrogen, I can open both wall and pass nitrogen and oxygen together. I can have a gas flow for phosphine, I can have phosphine with nitrogen both of them I can go through this. If I do not want I have a liquid source so I have a bubbler I pass nitrogen inside or argon sometimes and this vapors of this liquid is picked up and passed inside. Okay. If you have a solid source then the solid is actually solid source is kept right here small cube crucible which is rarely used. No one put phosphorus oxide or red phosphorus near the vapors. Okay. The importance of all this is that the, when the gases go in whichever form they go in they must form a laminar flow. Okay. 
and that is very important. Two parameters which we control in this is called which numbers? Renault numbers and Rayleigh's numbers. So we actually monitor the Rayleigh number, Renault number to get laminar insight. So that the wave, every wafer when the gas goes, it sees uniform flow like this. This is very important in processes. Please remember there are two kinds of flow meters which we use. Uh, what are these two? Anyone heard of them? One is called what is called rotameters. Okay. The rotameters are used in almost every industry, whether it is a fluid chemical liquid flow or gaseous flow. It is essentially a capillary which is graduated for particular gas densities. You pass the gas and there is a some float inside it, maybe stainless steel or plastic depends on the gas density. And this uh, small capillary is around 8 inch height, 10 inch height. The gas flows and since the gas flow pressure is from below, it pushes the float up okay, and it is balanced by the actual atmospheric pressure from the down. So depending on the gas flow you can calibrate where this uh, float will. So you can see a graduated scale you say okay 100 cc per 200 cc a liter whatever scales you want you can get these are called standard flow meters which are not very accurate because every flow meter is for different gases and uh, their graduation is not very accurate. But let us say I am passing 120 liters or say maybe or 50 liters per in a large tube it does not matter if it is 51 okay it does not matter if it is 49. But if I am passing 100 cc, I want 100 cc there. Okay. So the accuracy of flow is required in certain cases, otherwise it is not. To make a very accurate uh, flow inside, it should be independent of pressures. So what are those called? These are called mass flow meters. They are very costly MFCs, mass flow meters. MFCs have advantage that uh, you know it is like a tube here, the gas goes there, there is a small additional capillary tube goes up, maybe I can show you how it is. This is your main tube, this is something like this, another tube, okay. Then uh, depending on the gas you enter, there are three elements here this is a heater element, this is heated. So what happens if the gas flow is larger and if it is already heated sensor, it cools, okay. So there is a temperature initially because of the gas is T1, but since there is a heater here, it actually increases the temperature here. The difference between the temperature of two sensors is essentially monitor of the flow going in, okay. So we can set this temperature initially which is called set points. And if the gas is larger, then it shuts off, this wall here will be shutting off. If it is smaller, it will allow more gas to come in and very accurate amount of flow can be adjusted through this. This whole electronic system, this is huge circuit here actually. The flow, mass flow meter is typically around 8 inch by 8 inch kind of system. And it costs, there is a magnetic plunger, there are too many things inside to close or open. And these are very costly, typical flow meters are 25,000 and above, okay. Whereas the rotameters are available are 150 rupees, okay. So accuracy to money, okay. Uh, many a time these do not work, so our experience is that we open it and close, clean it and do it again. But 90% of the scientists do not do it, buy another one, okay. okay. So this is a typical diffusion system and I just give you all this janta, this which otherwise no one will know, tell you or no one will write about it. This is only we did many furnaces ourselves, so we know what we did, okay. So this is the better part of our technology was that we were making our own systems. Okay. There was nothing available, so we made our systems. Then the, we have seen phosphorus, let us look for boron. This uh, figure is nothing to do with phosphorus this is for all kinds of diffusing systems okay. There are as I say aluminum and gallium has a better misfit factor than boron, indium has 0.22, boron has 0.254, 
Okay. Uh, even then, uh, we only use boron. As I already said, aluminum is a bad, uh, it forms an alloy, so we do not want to use. Then gallium is essentially a very high energy, uh, it has a very large activity energy, so we do not want to create very few holes. Okay. Then indium also is 0.16 electron volt, so we, we do not want to use it. Boron has 0.086 uh, as the activation energy, so it is used very extensively. Since this misfit factor is larger, so what is the effect? Its solid solidity will be relatively smaller. So it is 4 into 10 to the power 19. Uh, in some cases, maybe 5 into 10 to the power 19 per cc. Is all that boron B. So P plus doping is always less than N plus doping simply because the misfit factor of boron is larger than phosphorus or arsenic. Of course, is the best. But arsenic as this gentleman also said that is a slow diffuser. So in a shallow junction they are good but if you are looking for deep junctions phosphorus is the only solution. Uh, so for why others are not, so I just gave you a why others are not used. So other sources is uh, B2O3, powder is available, boron nitride wafers are available and a very marketable material boric acid which is used in preservation of grains. Okay. So it is S3BO3, these are the three solid sources. Of course the one which we use in the market is not electronic grade, they are only industrial grade and they have lot many impurities so never used in labs anyway. Okay. We already said the kind of grades we are looking for is minimum 6, 9 and above okay, purities. 6-9 is the minimum purity which we will use preferably 9-9s, nine nine, okay, nine, 7-9.99. Okay. okay, so these are the solid sources. You, I mean I already said twice, why, why not aluminum, why not gallium, why not any other, only boron. Okay. There are reactions, the B2O3 plus 3 silicon is 4 boron plus 3 SiO2 and mixture of B2O3 plus SiO2 is called borosilicate glass popularly known as in market there are three kinds of glasses available in market. Borosil is essentially no it is it's exactly this borosilicate glass it is called Pyrex okay, very famously named Pyrex which is coming from borosil company. Okay. So, so it is uh, it's a Pyrex glass but it is not very pure and it is not very good. Uh, which is worse glass than this? Soda glass, the, tube, the whole drinks all, all the time you I do not know I, these days I do not see many people taking cold drinks but in our time I think it was much popular. So all cold drink bottles are essentially of soda, they contain sodium and no glass which has sodium is allowed inside our lab because if that happens everything will be auriferous. So sodium is avoided, so soda glass is never allowed. Pyrex at higher temperature may release impurities, okay. So we do not want high, purity, high uh, pyrex around glasses except when they are not used in heating areas we may use pyrex systems. But any time when we are going we should use only quartz plus this, so that is the catch in word everywhere. Okay. There is another as I say boric acid also can reduce to at 185 degree B2O3 plus water, water flow, uh, steams out and you have a B2O3 source. For this case uh, two zone furnace as you first you put S3BO3 oxidize it little bit and when it pass it forms a B2O3 near the surface and that is picked up on silicon. There is also a possibility of making a solar cell with cheaper sources which is called boron nitride sources. There are wafers of boron nitride. So you put silicon wafer in touch with boron nitride, both sides silicon. So both sides are same. So polished surfaces of silicon touches a boron nitride wafer in a slot and slot is so adjusted all three wafers are tied each other, okay. Such number of wafers, two silicon, one boron nitride, two silicon, one boron nitride and that is heated to create 
uh, boron nitride breaks with silicon into 4 boron and nitride. Instead of SiO2, now silicon nitride is the upper layer which is also a mask for impurities. Of course, it is not as good a mask as SiO2, but it is still a mask. Uh, the last source is liquid, which is uh, boron tribromide uh, BBR3. Uh, BBR3 reacts with oxygen to form B2O3. So, what was our primary source of boron? B2O3 is our primary source. So, whichever source you may have, you must convert this into B2O3 at the surface of silicon then only the next reaction is possible. Now this is a problem, boron is highly toxic as well as it is very highly reactive to silicon. So it gives what is called as halogen pit pitting. So when we were making 5 micron devices or depth of 3 micron junction depth, that pitting was irrelevant. But with 100 nanometer junctions, uh, the pitting may be of 100 nanometers. Okay. So there are issues now which in 25-30 years we never bothered. But now no one uses BBR3. Earlier time almost everyone used BBR3. Okay. So this is the progression. Now mostly people will not even use either of them. Okay. If uh, you want still a liquid source, then there is a source called trimethyl borate which is used now. TMB is very popularly known. TMB plus oxy when it oxidizes it creates B2O3, carbon dioxide and water. TMB okay. has a problem uh, that it, it has a very high vapor pressure, so it has to be refrigerated okay, to keep vapor pressure down otherwise it blast out. Okay. So it is always refri kept refrigerated and even when you put it, put in a water bath and then only use. Okay. So the process is, this is trimethyl borate, okay, tri, this is methyl group. So 2 CH3O B plus 9 O2 at 900 degree become B2O3, 6 CO2 plus 9 H2O. Okay. A very popular source. Okay. It also is very controllable source and therefore even now in many ICs, some labs, of course Intel is not using, but TI, of course TI is now selling off all this process, but TI had TMB process. Many a times people do not change to something else, simply if it is working just for the heck of it why should I change, okay. if it is not working for my requirement I will change. So many companies have been doing something which they think is working, so why change, so why money. Okay. But we know TM, better sources will be gaseous, but uh, it is a matter of your decision how much money you have. Uh, the other possible gaseous sources are boron chloride or boron hydro, uh, boron, uh, diborane as called B2H6, they are all gas sources. BCL3 reacts with 3O2 to form B2O3 and 6Cl2 and again the same issue, it may pit. Okay. Uh, it does, normally chlorine does not pit as much unless there is a hydrogen around. If it is HCl is around, it will definitely pit. But if your system has hydrogen free, it's, it will not give that much pitting. It does react, but it has a very marginal silicon reaction. With H around, HCl, it will pit it. Okay. Why I am saying you? Because some of the gate oxide growths were earlier using chlorine as a improving species for interspace states and we used to use chlorinated oxide and then we realized that it is actually creating more problems than this. So we changed to other TCAs and other chlorine sources. BCL3 plus 3H2H2 boron plus 6 HCl and here is that issue. If there is an HCl, there is a pitting. 4 HCl plus C, this is what it means silicon chloride will form. So some spots this may go. Okay. If it is hydrogen free, absolutely no issue. Quickly, diborane is a highly toxic gas, very carefully has to be handled and uh, it oxidizes at 300 degree to form B2O3. The gas flow is one parameter for the see, amount of oxygen plus this mixture of these two gases. The mixture decides how much concentration you are going to get. Okay. As I say, they are and it should be laminar decided by Renal number and Rayleigh's numbers. Okay. Uh, how do I test that the boron diffusion is okay? 
this is not advised by for many, but people like us have done that. You see on the other end of the tube and if you see a two good lobes of heart, you say you are perfectly laminar flow going in, okay. This is called boron lobes. So you actually see otherwise it will be mashed up, you will see a mixture of everything. If you see a good lobes, you say you are perfectly under this. So I just tell you how do we found out that it is okay, this is how we figured out, okay. Last source, is that okay? B2S6 plus 3O2 at 300 degree becomes, what is the primary source I declared? B2O3, so all processes I show you, reactions I show to convert that whatever source you use into B2O3 at this elegant surface, okay. Primary source, so we are always converting all secondary sources to the primary source, that is the way. Last slide for the day, not last for the course, there are many more to come, just we will finish and come back. The last is arsenic uh, impurity which may use very often these days for example. The solid is arsenic oxide uh, which is also called when arsenic oxide plus SiO2 is called arsenosilicate glass. Uh, rarely used because AS2O3 is also little poisonous, so it is hardly used or hardly sold. Of course, sold I do not know, these days anything is available. Whether uh, yesterday there was some thing that cobra venom is uh, people like, so I am surprised, okay. I just fear so much cobra and they take venoms, okay, fine. So, AS3 uh, reduces around 320 degree, 25 degree to arsenic and hydrogen. Arsenic reacts with oxygen to form AS2O3 and AS2O3 plus SI is SiO2 plus arsenic. So that is how arsenic gets in and SiO2 is created on the top. Is that okay? So next, yes. They are exhausted at least uh, 30 feet up. And then uh, if there are toxic gases, there is something called scrubbers, okay. So they pass through solution where they are converted into solids or solubles which are non-toxic. Okay. 